Welcome to another episode of Two Sisters in a Cup of Tea. We're so glad you're here and today we've got the delight of Nancy Guthrie joining us as we spend some time thinking through what it looks like to see Jesus on every page of Deuteronomy. Before we get there though, I want to tell you about our season sponsors, Kaleidoscope Kids Bibles. Our sponsors enable the podcast to keep happening and we're so thankful for their wholehearted support of what we're doing. Kaleidoscope help kids and parents bridge the gap between storybook bibles and adult translations by retelling every book of the bible at an elementary or primary age reading level in beautifully designed single volume chapter books they've already got a third of the bible finished with volumes ranging from exodus to revelation matthew to psalms and many many more in between and look out for their highly anticipated newest release genesis Welcome to Two Sisters and a Cup of Tea. My name's Felicity, I'm here in the States, and this is my sister Sarah in the UK, and today we're delighted that we've got Nancy Guthrie with us. Welcome, Nancy, great to have you with us. Wow, what a treat to get the, to be with the two sisters. Does this mean I can be sister number three? <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, anyone absolutely. who joins Yeah, honorary, yeah. you know. <laughs> love that, love absolutely. that. And I do love tea. I've kind of had my fill of it so far today, but I can always use more. What, what would be your, your choice of tea? Oh, I would like a fruity black tea. Mm, right? Fruity. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this morning I had uh, twinnings. Do you say twinnings or twinings? Twinings. Twinings. All right. So I had twinings mixed <laughs> berry black tea. Oh, that sounds really nice. I'm just going to find some. Yeah, I never Love thought of putting it. fruit with black tea. That's interesting. Never yeah. thought of it. I- <laughs> <laughs> clearly i've missed the twinings memo about that clearly you also <laughs> yeah. need to try the mango and the peach oh Ooh. well good yeah. to know good mm. to know and i love uh, instructing these two brits about tea, <laughs> <let me just> say. <laughs> but the real question is how do you feel about biscuits of the english variety of the English variety, because they're cookie like, I am all for it. But you know, I love I love a, an American biscuit as well, but with honey, except then my fingers get all sticky and I don't like that. But you know, I love a biscuit. Sometimes it can be a bit bland, but yeah, but in general, anything that's cookie like material, I'm pretty much all for. So fair enough. We're excited, Nancy, that you're here to help us see Jesus in Deuteronomy. And you have written numerous dozens of books where we've Sarah and I've both benefited hugely from your books and from your teaching and um, so we're grateful for all that you've been doing on that front and I was thinking a few recent books we've got um that God does his best work with empty even better than Eden um a personal favorite the kids book I see Jesus and I, I think your most recent kids book true king um are you working on anything at the moment I'm not Wow. I'm not. Don't tell your husband. <laughs> he'll, he'll, he'll want to fill up my yeah, yeah. Uh, my to do list, right? You know, I do. I am. I am busy. Yeah, uh, and I I do have a couple of ideas in the hopper that I'll start <laughs> on. You know what? One thing that drives me, Felicity, is that I always teach the women of my church in the summers, and mm-hmm. so that's always a push for me to get started working on teaching something else, so that mm-hmm. I'm prepared in June and July to teach at my own church. So that's what's nice. pushing me now. Brilliant. Brilliant. Always That's busy. Great. That's true. Busy for the Lord. And we're really hopeful that, and this is going to be a, a fruitful conversation for us and for our listeners. And we're, we're excited that you're here to help us with this. Yeah, great. So should we, should we crack on with some of the questions, Nancy? Um, so as we told you, we're in the book of Deuteronomy for this season and we've been really enjoying it. Um, and we really just want your wisdom on what it looks like to really, really see Jesus in this book. Um, so more a more general question to start off with then. So as people living this side of the cross, how are we to understand the use of the Old Testament for us? I know that's a huge question, but could you just give a kind of a few pointers for, for our listeners on that? Well, I think we want to understand it the way Jesus taught his followers to understand it. So that makes me think about John 5 where he says to the religious leaders, um, you know, basically he says, you think your law keeping is going to get you eternal life. But the truth is you don't even believe the scriptures because Mm. the scriptures are all about me. Mm. And I mean, when he said that, they must have just been like, what are you talking about? (laughs) You are this carpenter from Nazareth and we are experts in the scriptures and we don't see you in there. Um, or, or even more significantly, or the one, 
the verse that honestly really changed my life was when I really grasped what was happening in Luke 24, when Jesus is walking on that road to Emmaus with two of his followers, Mm -hmm. they have seen him crucified. They know he's been put in the tomb in Jerusalem. They've heard these reports that maybe Jesus has resurrected from the dead, but they don't recognize that that's actually the risen Jesus walking with them. And they're so disappointed. They say, we thought he was the one who would redeem Israel. And Jesus's response to them is amazing. He says to them, oh, foolish ones, so slow of heart to believe all the prophets had spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer before being glorified. So in other words, he's saying, you know what, guys, if you had been reading your Bibles, and for them, that would be the Old Testament, and especially the books of the law, Mm -hmm. including Deuteronomy. And he's basically saying, if you had been reading them rightly, then you would know that when the Messiah, the Christ came, the way he was going to usher in victory would be through incredible defeat. Uh, The way glory was going to come would be through suffering. And then it says, beginning with Moses and the prophets, he explained all things concerning himself. Now, that's an incredible statement. I mean, when I hear that, first first thing I think is, now, Luke, why didn't you record more about what he said right there? Because (laughs) (laughs) I I would like to know. Um, (laughs) But I think it sets for us how we're going to read the Old Testament. It says that Jesus says that we should look at, he says, beginning with Moses, we're going to look at Genesis and Exodus and Leviticus and Numbers and Deuteronomy. And we're going to ask ourselves the question and seek to find the best answer we can to it, which is, what does this part of what Moses has written, what is it telling me about who the Christ will be and what the Christ will do and accomplish? And so I think Jesus's instruction is to look at the Old Testament and ask that question, what do I see Mm. of the Christ here? I love that. I love that. And that is so clear, isn't it? You're right. And especially in that Luke 24, (laughs) such a statement. And so that's licensed to then ask the question, isn't it? And I think that's, it's a push to do that more and more. And, And so I think, um, we, when we open the Bible, we want to be knowing and loving Jesus more every time we pick up our Bibles. And I hear your answer to that question. I think, brilliant. This is it. The Old Testament is is also all a part of that, which is just so true. And I know that to be true, but it can feel not quite that easy when you come to a book like Deuteronomy. So mm-hmm. how can a, a book like Deuteronomy help us to be knowing and loving Jesus more every time we open it up? Yeah. I can see why you you would say it that way in so many ways when you think, oh, a book of Deuteronomy full of this law, so much of it seems so ancient, so much seems so foreign. And and in fact, we look at it and we say, does this apply to me in the same way it did to the original readers? And our answer would be, no, it doesn't. And so then we've got a challenging question in terms of what does it mean to me? But I actually think it is this going to it asking what difference is Jesus going to make? What's, what difference is it going to make when Jesus comes and when he does what he's going to do? What difference is that going to make in how I understand it? And Jesus makes all the difference. Mm-hmm. And and so as we read a book like Deuteronomy, I think like so much of the rest of the Old Testament, we read it. And let's let's say we're in the law part of Deuteronomy, all of these instructions about what we're going to do. And, you know, I always find it humorous when someone says, well, I think basically to be a Christian, you just have to live by the Ten Commandments. And I always think to myself, yeah, well, good luck with that. Yeah. <laughs> right. Because, I mean, that's just not easy. Like, who, who is it who thinks they can? Mm. I, I'd be shocked by that. Right. And so, you know, I think we're meant to actually look in the law. And go, oh man, I would aspire to live a life like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, And when I look at that, I see the beautiful character of God, the beautiful, the law of God, in, in that we see God's compassion and his holiness and really his love for his people. 
in the way that he's calling us to love our neighbor and interact with him and with everyone else. I mean, we, we can look at it that way, but we also have this sense of, but I can never do this. Hmm. And that, that can lead us to just feel hopeless unless we really do believe that there is going to be one who is going to come. And he's actually, when he says that he's come to fulfill the law, it means that he's going to live out the demands of the law perfectly. And so maybe someone says, well, what difference does that make to me? Well, this makes all the difference. And this is what makes it urgent for every one of us that we become united to Christ by faith. And by that, I mean, we reach out and we take hold of Christ. And by that, we say, okay, Jesus, your your perfect love for the law, your perfect obedience to the law, as I take hold of you, that perfect righteousness becomes mine. And, but that's not, that's just like one end of the equation, because the other end of the equation is that all of my failure to keep your law, in other words, all of my failure to love the Lord my God, all of my failure in the ways I've taken his name in vain, all the ways I have um, coveted the things of my neighbor, and all the ways I've been unfaithful and untruthful and not kept his Sabbath, which even just say it, you start to feel the load of it, right? Mm -hmm. But all of my lifelong failure to do all those things has transferred Jesus. And so if your question is, how can I read something like this and love Jesus? It's because when I look into this law, I see my own failure, but I see the love of Christ taking all of my unrighteousness, my my law breaking, and not just like the little slip ups, but the outright rebellion against God's law. And Jesus has taken that, all of that upon himself. And in that same suite, you know, transferred to me his perfect record of righteousness. And why has he done that? Because here's something amazing. The God who made the world actually has a desire to dwell with his people, Mm -hmm. which includes me. And so he has done everything necessary to make it possible for me to enter into union with Christ now, and then one day enter into his perfectly holy and righteous presence. And so I look at Deuteronomy and I might initially feel hopeless. I think I meant to actually Mm -hmm. initially feel hopeless, but then I look at, there's something to me, one of the most interesting things in Deuteronomy is early on, you hear this command to the people of God. They're supposed to circumcise Mm -hmm. their hearts. Have you guys already talked about this? Yeah, so we've kind of got that got that tension of do it yourself, right. and then at right. the and end, then later on, I yes, will. exactly. Yeah. He says, "I'm going to do that." Yeah. Well, to me, I mean, if we're looking for a reason to love him in Deuteronomy, we get to see here that everything he commands, he will provide for us, and all of our hopelessness about being able to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. We know that when we are united to Christ, he does a a work in the interior of our lives. The Holy Spirit goes to work in us, circumcising our hearts. And and the way I would describe what that's all about is he's giving us the want to, Mm -hmm. because that's the other desperate need, right? Uh, Not only do I want that transaction in terms of his judgment, that I am judged righteous because I've received the imputed righteousness of Christ. I want the reality of the righteousness of Christ to be growing in my life. Mm -hmm. I I, I, want to, I want to live out my life in this world, being more like Christ tomorrow than I am today. And the only way that's going to happen is if God by his spirit, through his word is at work in my life, giving me the want to, Mm -hmm. to, to actually overcome some of my own sinful wants and desires and to be at work sanctifying them so that I find myself increasingly day by day finding that what I want more and more lines up with what God wants so that I love what he loves and I hate what he hates 
That's the, that's the goal and aim of my life. And I think that is the promise mm. of the book of Deuteronomy. That's so helpful. That's so helpful. That phrase, the kind of giving us the want to really, really appreciate that and the way that you phrase that. Can I push you on just what it looks like? No. To, no. So, <laughs> <laughs> what it looks like to see, see that in the language of Deuteronomy. I think one of the challenges I felt is that I've, I'm reading and trying to soak myself in Deuteronomy. And at the same time, I'm thinking, well, I feel like I need to read Romans and Hebrews. And like, I just, you know, it's Deuteronomy is everywhere, isn't it? As you kind of start to kind of pick up the language, you're seeing it in every, every other book in the Bible, it feels like. What does it look like to apply deeply to my heart with the language of Deut- Deuteronomy and not not kind of fast forwarding too soon to New Testament or I don't know is there a danger there I think we've been Felicity we've been discussing haven't we yeah are are we going too quickly to Jesus is the answer here is it possible to do that or not like Mm. talk us through how how you approach some of those questions yeah defines what you mean by too quickly so I would say this I, I would say for most of my life in Bible study no matter where I was be reading the Old Testament and pretty much we got very quickly to asking the question how do I apply this to me mm. and and if you're going in a direct line from reading Deuteronomy to how does this apply to me yes that's too quickly mm. All right so what have you got to do first first you go from the text to what is this what did this mean to the original readers or in other words you know them then and that's very important for a book of Deuteronomy especially when we get into that civil law uh, or you know you know don't boil a goat in his mother's milk, you know, those kinds of things. We get to those kinds of things. Um, we've got to understand what did that mean to them then? What, why were they given those kind of instructions at this point in Israel's history and at this point in the covenant relationship between God and his people? But we also don't want to go from there directly to then, how am I going to apply it to me? Because it is important to it. We don't want to read the Bible like like uh like, like simply old testament jews yeah. we want to read it in light of the person and work of jesus christ and so the next question we ask is what difference does the life death and resurrection of jesus make for how i'm going to understand deuteronomy and therefore apply it to myself and it makes all the difference his life makes a difference because his righteous life, he he lived out this law. His death makes a difference because he died for my lawlessness. And his resurrection makes a difference because he ever lives to intercede for me. And that resurrection life is what's going to, what enables me to live in, uh, in new life as the spirit is at work in me. And so when I take all, then I finally get to how does this apply to me? And I've got the richness of all of those things, and I'm able to rightly apply it mm. to me. Yeah. So I do think you can get go too quickly, but I guess I heard in your question, like you want to be completely satisfied with just what you read in in Deuteronomy. And and maybe there are some places to that, but I still think you got to get to Christ. Like mm. when I yeah. think about places in Deuteronomy that warm my heart. Like, I love that passage. It's either in six or seven where it talks, where he's talking about, I, I chose you. And he says, I didn't choose you because you were mm. the, you know, the strongest or the most or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Cause it's, it's kind of like, I can hear God just saying, I, I, I loved you because, because, because I loved you. Yeah. It's an amazing phrase. He he set his affection on them, isn't it? It's I, that, yeah, that, I love that yeah. phrase there. It's right, so wonderful. And, and so every when I think about that, I think about that being godlike love. Mm. You know, it it, it, it that it, it, it's love that in a sense goes against merit, mm. and it causes me to look at the way I interact with people and um, to take joy in setting my love on people, especially people who don't have a lot to give back to me Mm -hmm. and people that they might not seem worth it, or they might not seem worthy or whatever else, but find great joy in that. And and then personally just realizing that's the case for me with, with God, that he, because I'm a part of God's people, I I know it wasn't because I was smart enough or because I showed a lot of potential uh, or any of those things. 
it's it's just solely that in God's sovereignty, he chose to set his love on me, mm-hmm. to draw me to himself. That's so humbling. That humbles me when I think about family members who maybe, you know, grew up in the same home I did, but aren't in Christ. And it humbles me that he's drawn me to himself and that he set his love on me in this way. And um, so in that sense, I think, you know, just in Deuteronomy, it's warming my heart. It's challenging me. It's showing me something about the love of God, but that love of God comes to me through the person and work of Christ. So I've still got to get to Christ to feel it. Mm, I think that was really helpful. What you were saying um, a a few minutes ago, as we see God's character in, in the law, in Deuteronomy, we see who he is and we see the person of Christ in that kind of even the idea of the perfect obedience that that comes in that and i think i found that that then has really provoked my desire to want to be obedient and what it looks like to be obedient this side of the cross and the other side of the cross that that's different in terms of what we do with the law but the actual heart of desiring obedience as you say that the lord has given through his grace that that want mm. um to do it that's been something that's really struck me. And so, I, but it's interesting, isn't it? Because I think through through Jesus, then I see that more clearly and I see the life more clearly. I see God's character more clearly. We're so privileged to be this side of the cross in that sense. But it then, it then still raises the question again, which is just in my mind, probably unfathomable as to how we then apply this <laughs> this to us. And and, and you always, you're at, it's so true, Nancy. We always have to pull it back to to Jesus and we see it through Jesus and we we're not seeking to apply it without Jesus. But I want to be obedient because of Jesus. I want to be obedient and I and it's a desirable life. And I'm still kind of like, oh <laughs> what does that actually look like for me reading Deuteronomy now? And and maybe that is just something that you just kind of mull on as as life goes on and you kind of get to know God better and you you see what it is to be obedient to him. But do you not think it's part of the, his call to holiness and his part his call to godliness, which is, is becoming like him, isn't it? That is what holiness is. Mm. And part of seeing his character in the law that we're starting to see, it, it is beautiful. And then you do see that in Jesus. You do see that he drew near to those in need always. And yeah, as Nancy's been saying, as it stirred her heart, it's that similar, oh Lord, I, I do want to draw near. I do, you know, but that it's that flow of worship involved in that as well, isn't it? That actually that begins to be then a worship of the Lord and not just a dutiful, I should do this. Yes. Yes. This makes me think about Psalm one. Um, and do you remember in Psalm one where he's talking about, you know, blessed is the man mm. who, uh, you know, doesn't walk in the way of the ungodly. Remember that the three things he's, mm-hmm. that don't influence him, but it says, but, but in contrast, it's saying the, the blessed person or the blessed man is the one his delight is in the law of the Lord. Mm-hmm. And on that law, he meditates day and night. So I can kind of think he's saying he delights in, in, in Deuteronomy. Yeah. <laughs> and he reads it day and night. And, you know, I, I use this often at the biblical theology workshops that I do and just talk about, you know, what it means to be a person who approaches the word of God. And it's, we don't approach it with just with a sense of duty, but we, we have some delight in it and how I really think that shows that the spirit is at work in us that we can delight in it. But the truth is it's a good example of nobody can delight in the law of the Lord apart from Christ. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because apart from the Christ, the law only damns us. The law, Deuteronomy, we should dread, hate, fear Deuteronomy apart from Christ mm-hmm. because we simply can't do it. And God is clear, especially as we get later in Deuteronomy, his demands for obedience, you know, his, his promises of blessings for those who obey and curses for disobedience. And I mean, goodness, w- who could delight in that if if we thought it was all going to be all, all up to us to just keep it perfectly? And, and we've got the whole history of the Old Testament to show us if you think you can, which the people in Deuteronomy, you know, they've already said that, right? They already said, 
okay, Lord, everything you tell us to do. <laughs> yeah. It's like they raise their hands and cross their hearts and hopes to die. We're going to do it, right? And yeah. when you hear, when you read that they say that, you go, oh boy. Yeah, <laughs> I know, setting themselves up. <laughs> exactly, this is not going to work out well for them. Well, the same with us. You know, we, we, we look at it, we long to live, you know, we long for our lives to be conformed to this shape, this character. But the only way we can delight in this law is because we know we belong body and soul to our mm-hmm. faithful creator, Jesus Christ, and that he has fulfilled the law in our place and he has taken our punishment for all of our failures to obey this law. And because of that, we can delight in Deuteronomy. We can delight in trying to figure out how can I love the Lord my God with all of my heart and my soul and my mind and my strength. and. I can afford to really interrogate my own heart in regard to loving him first and dealing with the idols in my life and dealing with the covetousness in my life. And I can afford to really investigate and interrogate my own heart in that because I know there is one who has fulfilled it for me, Mm. but because he loves me and because his spirit's living within me, I'm not content to just stay how I am. I Mm. want to be more and more conformed to his image. Oh, so Uh, good. So helpful, (laughs) especially, especially just that, that I can afford to actually delve into my sin almost and just kind of expose it because I'm safe to do that in Jesus. That's, that's really helpful because actually the way Moses preaches this sermon in Deuteronomy, he makes you squirm, doesn't he? Like, (laughs) From the first few verses, the people of God are squirming as they hear what he has to say about their hearts and about their sin. And we've really felt that, haven't we? But actually, yeah. as you say, that that safety to to feel that, to repent, to keep coming to Christ and to ask for him to root out that sin and that idol idolatry and replace yeah. it. Yeah. And because of Christ, it's not like we take it lightly because of Christ. Yeah. Like, oh, mm-hmm. that's no big deal because I'm good. No, because of Christ and because we love him and he loves us, we take it very seriously Yeah, because we know this is the law that he loves. And he actually says, if you love me, keep my commands. And mm-hmm. so because we love him and because we know we are in his love, we can dare to uh, face up to our law breaking. Mm. Uh, that is just such a good way to then keep reading Deuteronomy, isn't it? I, I feel like you go into it then with this honesty of heart and a, a, as you say, so a safety of heart, because we're actually in in Christ to such a degree that we're we're able to do that. And that you know, that excites me. That excites me to then keep keep reading mm-hmm. Deuteronomy and sort of digging into it, doesn't it? That's that's really, really helpful. Yeah, Thank big you. time. Nancy, it's been such a joy to have you on. Thank you. This is like been quietly blowing my mind yeah. just like with all that you said I feel like I'm gonna to need to re-listen and re-listen just kind of like take it all in again and um, would you pray for us and would you pray for our listeners please as we close Lord we come to you as the God who set your love on us we can just hardly fathom that and we know it wasn't because of what we had to offer you or to offer this world or any potential we had or because we're all that But just because before the foundations of the world, you chose us in Christ to be holy and blameless before you. And so we come to you with great humility and great gratitude that you have made us your own. Great gratitude that you are inviting us into these covenant promises to be our God and that you will make us your people. Mm. And Lord, as we look into your law, Lord, help us to not look at it casually. Help us to not think about other people who need it. To th- help us to not dismiss its gravity. Actually, we want to feel its full gravity because that's the only way we can feel and a, a true sense of gratitude for what it means. That because we are joined to Christ, we can be sure that his perfect law keeping in our place has earned us a place in your presence. Lord, and we thank you and praise you uh, for his perfect sacrifice, his perfect bearing 
of the penalty of our inability to live up to your law. And we just ask you over the days to come, day by day, as we look into your word, help us to not be afraid of your law, but help us as we gaze into your law that it would urge us more closely to Christ, that we would have more love for him, more gratitude for him, be more aware of our need for him, need for his spirit to be at work in us, giving us what we need to walk out through this, walk through this life in ways that please you. Your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Nancy, thank you so much. Just a delight to have you here in conversation with us, an honorary sister for sure, at least until we, you know, stop recording. <laughs> no, longer than that, longer than that. <laughs> but um, we, I, I've been reliably informed that there is an amazing deal on uh, your two, ki- 10 of those kids books. So True King and I See Jesus, you can get them both at 10 for an amazing price. So go and check out their website, and uh, do like we I've benefited hugely from Nancy's writing and uh, numerous books of hers so I highly recommend um, any of her books and we will see you next week thank you so much for listening we're so thankful to Kaleidoscope and tenofthose.com for sponsoring this episode head over to tenofthose.com to grab any of Nancy's books or a fantastic Kaleidoscope bible today